during the fourth phase of the game, that would be the battle event. Again, you would complete the phase actions initially based on any card or panel that shows a phase event for battle. We do not currently have any in any of the opposition ships, the strike force ships, or sector panels, or opposition panel, or mission cards. So none of those trigger this phase. Then what you do is what's called the engage event. All strike force ships must engage the opposition if possible. A strike force ship can either engage as a primary engager or as a secondary engager. Primary engagers deal and receive damage, and secondary engagers grant a bonus to the primary engager, but do not deal or receive damage. An opposition ship must have a primary engager in order to have a secondary engager and an opposition ship may have no more than one primary engager and one secondary engager. You can only engage ships in the same sector. If there are no opposition ships in a sector, you cannot engage. So what you will do is you will take one of the engage tokens, like this, and place it on the ship that you want to engage. So in this case, Therendim has a total of six weapon energy and one defensive energy, as we can see here. Now remember he installed a tech, or they again installed a tech, that allows them to take no damage at all during a combat. So, they can choose to engage any of these three opposition ships. Now, how combat works is you will take the total number of weapon energy and compare it against the opposition's defensive energy. And then again, you will do the vice versa. So then you will take the weapon energy of the offensive ships and compare it against the defensive energy of your ship. How this works is, if Therendim engages the Alpha Prime here, and is engaged, then what happens is he would take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 against 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, you would take 6 minus 4 and you would get 2. Then what you would do is you would do 2 energy damage to the opposition ship. Now remember that combat is simultaneous. So if shields are already down and you start removing weapon energy, you have to make sure that you keep that number in mind or shown so that you can deal the correct amount of damage back to your ship or again vice versa depending on how you choose to deal out damage. So in this case we had 6 to 4 which was 2 so we would remove 2 defensive energy from the Alpha Prime. That would get discarded off to the side and now the Alpha Prime here has 4 weapon energy and two defensive energy. Again, depending on who you wanted to attack, you could have attacked the Automatronic Hunter, and in that case it would have been six versus three, which means that you would have had three total energy damage, and you would have removed all three of the defensive energy from the Automatronic Hunter. Again, in this case, we have four weapon energy versus one, but again remember that Therendim Shroud here, energy cannot be removed from the ship during the battle phase. So because it's energy, no damage will be done to Therendim during this battle phase. So this engagement is over. 
over here we have the conclave of Niphon that only has one possible target, which would be the automatronic hunter. Again, you would place an engage token on both of the ships to show that they are engaged in combat. Here, the conclave of Niphon has one, two, three, four weapon energy and one, two, three, four defensive energy. Remember, we have a boost that we could play during this turn if we so chose. And again, over here, we have another boost with Therndon. So in this case, with the Conclave of Niphon, we do 4 minus 3 is 1. So we would do 1 defensive because it's one total energy damage and it's always taken from defensive first. The Automatronic Hunter would fire at the same time and do three weapon damage to the Conclave of Niphon, which has a four defensive rating. So three minus four is negative one, which means that the Conclave of Niphon is unscathed in this combat. With that, we have no need to play this boost for the two additional temporary shield or defensive tokens because with the three it is not capable of breaking the four defense that is on the conclave of Niphon so there is no energy damage done. So that's good for the conclave of Niphon there is no damage dealt out and with Therndim because of the tech there is no damage dealt out this turn to either strike force member whereas the opposition force has been damaged very slightly, but at least has been damaged. And that would be the end of the battle phase, as long as you've engaged. Now, do keep in mind, if you remember earlier when I was talking about secondary engagement, that will be shown at the bottom of your panel here. So, the Conclave of Nephon has the internodal blink, which is, you may move one ship in this sector to another sector. So if this ship had been here, so both Strike Force members had been in the same sector panel, instead of engaging two ships as a primary, one of them could have engaged as a primary and another as a secondary. You would still put an engaged marker on the ship that is a secondary engager and then trigger that effect. So in this you may move one ship in this sector to another sector. So you could move yourself, you could move an opposition ship, or you could move another strike force member over to another sector. Keep in mind again as long as there was a primary engager first, so let's say that we actually had three Strike Force ships. Therndim triggered first, engaged a ship. Then, Conclave of Niphon engaged secondary with Therndim against the ship. You could then trigger that secondary ability to move the third ship to another sector who could then engage another ship in a different sector. Do not let these things where you have these different abilities that can trigger at different times, don't forget that you can do them. A lot of times, um, because this is a card-based game and unique ability game, these will break the rules, such as right here, being able to move outside of a travel phase. Normally, Strike Force ships can only move during the travel phase from one sector to another. This allows you, on the other hand, to break the rules of the game. These are things that can be played out of order, and you do have to make sure that you pay attention to them and you use them to your advantage. Again, Therndim, if Therndim was the secondary engager, you get to remove one energy from the engaged ship. Now, in this case, if Therndim was here, and he was the s and they were the secondary engager, engager with the Conclave of Niphon, 
against the automatronic hunter, what you could do is you could trigger this first to remove one of the defensive energy. So here he had started with three. So if we trigger this first, we would remove one defensive energy. Then we would take the four, subtract it by two, and remove the two energy. So this brings this ship down, or the automatronic hunter, down to a zero shield value. He would have still done three against here, which would have been a negative one, and no damage would be done to the Conclave of Niphon. But now this ship is ready to be hit at a three weapon energy if the next turn... Okay, so the memory card ran out there. So what I was explaining was that if we had moved the ship over here and done the secondary engagement, this would have turned out just a little bit differently than it did. But what we're going to do is we're going to return this energy here and move this back and put Therndim back into the sector he was initially in. <clears throat> Now, one other thing that was not explained clearly in the rules and uh, took me a little bit was that the ship's engagement is not until <clears throat> one ship uh, is destroyed. Uh, it's just one round of combat, one pass at combat, uh, however you want to take into or take that into consideration. So you'll fire once with your ship against the opposition, and again, the opposition will fire once against the straight force ship. And that will bring the battle phase to a close. So one thing that I almost forgot to explain at the end of the battle phase, um, or during the battle phase after you have destroyed an opposition ship, is the bounty. Um, this wasn't actually really explained well in the rulebook, and... Uh, I missed it on the first couple of ships I destroyed when I was doing my initial playthrough. So after the name of the opposition ship, you will have the bounty directly underneath it. What this means is when you scrap this ship by removing all of its weapon energy and defensive energy, then you get to claim the bounty on the ship. This bionic gatherer would give you one defensive energy as a bounty which is claimed immediately and in this case would be placed directly on your ship panel. So Therndim, if he was to have destroyed it, would have put it right here on the ship panel adding to any other energy that was already there. Now do you keep in mind that you can have multiple types of bounties. So you have there defensive energy. Here you have weapon energy. And then there are other ones that are a little bit more special such as the Alpha Prime which is remove two energy from an opposition ship in this sector. So that means two energy in total and again just like on the Strike Force ships you would remove it first from the defensive energy and then from the weapon energy. But it's a good idea to resolve your combats in order again that benefits you the most so if you could take down the alpha prime and in doing so remove two shields from another ship that will allow you to scrap that during the turn it's a better idea to make sure to trigger the alpha prime's bounty first and that way if that helped you take down this you would have gotten an extra weapon energy this turn instead of having to wait an entire another turn to take this down